Welcome back. In this episode, I'm going to share with you how to create a blue ocean strategy, how to employ it. You may or may not be aware of a best-selling business book by that title, A Blue Ocean Strategy. Uh, it has a subtitle, uh, How to Make Your Competition Irrelevant and Have the Greatest Compensation with the Least Competition. So why is this important? If you're not a business owner, this is uh, oftentimes the competition that is your children's peers or uh, those that are influencing them to make wrong choices. So it doesn't matter what hat you're wearing as a business owner, as a parent, as a grandparent, uh, I want you to understand that a blue ocean mentality will help you prosper. So as we go through this, I'm going to give you specific action steps to make sure you always have a blue ocean of opportunity instead of a red ocean. What's red? Blood. Bloody dog eating dog competitive world that we live in. You want to have a blue ocean. So I'm Doug Andrew, and I love to help empower you with abundant living ways. I can't take credit for everything that I share. Our lives are a combination of incredible experiences that we have learned from many mentors in our life. I've mentioned uh, before one of my mentors is Marshall Thurber, and uh, he reads a book a day. And he wanted to create a group of out-of-the-box thinkers that he called Positive Deviants. He read my first book in an hour. It's 550 pages, and he understood it better than anybody I've ever talked to. And he said, oh, Doug, you think out of the box? Uh, I want you to be part of this group called Positive Deviants. Now, how would you like to be called a deviant? Well, what he meant was there are a lot of uh, negative deviants in the world, maybe the Hitlers or what have you, that uh, try to take advantage of people. They try to maybe preach fairness when their own hidden agenda was to create their own unfair advantage and control over humanity. But he said positive deviance might be uh, Gandhi, Abraham Lincoln, uh, Christ. And so he said, I want to gather together 20 out of the box positive influencers. And I was honored to be in this group. So he did prerequisite reading because he reads a book a day, but for 90 days, he read six books a day before lunch. And at the end of 60 days, he said, these are the two books, Blue Ocean Strategy and A Whole New Mind by Daniel Pink. Now, in this episode, I'm going to explain why he chose Blue Ocean Strategy. Because so many people go through life and they live or create a red ocean. Many business owners, they think that the only way to be the tallest building in town is to tear down all the other buildings. Uh, politicians do this. They tear down their opponent thinking, well, if I can tear them down, then they'll vote for me. You know, a blue ocean is not about tearing down other people. You don't worry about the competition. You actually become the competition because it's not about taking yourself higher by tearing down. When as Zig Ziglar, one of my favorite motivational speakers would say, uh, when everybody's <laughs> throwing dirt, everybody's losing ground, right? No, you don't want to do that. Red ocean connotes the bloody ocean where sharks are fighting one another, a dog eating dog world. So a lot of business owners, a lot of people, a lot of competitors, they will go out and always uh, try to compete by always tearing down, well, that's not true or this or whatever. Uh, here, uh, this is what I'm gonna show you to do because they're wrong. Well, instead of doing that, what you wanna do is focus on solving the best customer. And if your customer is your child, your grandchild, Okay, your employee, I'm not just talking about a business owner, I'm talking about you being a parent, a husband, a wife. Uh, your customer is going to be the one that you want to give them clarity and have a blue ocean of abundance that they come to you for the real important questions of life instead of their peers. It's what we call creating a value 
creation monopoly. Now, normally monopolies probably don't have a good connotation. This is a good kind of monopoly. We all grant them. In other words, my wife will travel across town passing probably a hundred other uh, pedicurists or massage therapists or to get her hair done because the one that she goes to does it just the way she likes and uh, she's sort of a confidant and she can share things. See, that is a special relationship. I travel past over a hundred other dentists to go to my dentist because they have a value creation monopoly. People will go to a movie to watch the latest version of uh, Harry Potter or the Avengers and they will shell out uh, $6 for 20 cents worth of popcorn and they don't even bat an eye because they're having this unique experience in this movie because the movie has this uh, value creation monopoly. It's not about the money, it's about the experience. So how do you do that? You create a blue ocean of opportunity where they know those customers, your children, your grandchildren, know that you're not going to judge them. You love them and they can come in confidence and share. You have this blue ocean mentality and you will be honest and not judge. You will lift them up and the only way to lift others up is to be on higher ground. And so you focus on their DOS, D-O-S, so I'm going to explain what that means. So one of my mentors that I appreciate is Dan Sullivan, and he's actually the one who coined DOS, D-O-S. Uh, it doesn't stand for Disk Operating System, by the way, if you're an old geezer like me. Uh, the D stands for dangers, the O stands for opportunities, and the S stands for strengths. So <clears throat> this is what I do. I look at those that I want to influence in a blue ocean environment, whether it's my customers or my patients, my kids, my grandkids, uh, whatever hat I'm wearing, if I'm a leader over Boy Scouts. And uh, before I am interfacing with them, in a blue ocean mindset, I'll say, okay, why are they experiencing frustration? Why are they feeling confused? And, and what dangers can I help them eliminate? So when I would mentor troubled youth, I knew the dangers uh, because they're being tempted with all kinds of uh, you know, drugs, alcohol, and this and that and the other. And, and so they're experimenting and, and they're being told things by their peers. And so I knew what those dangers were. So I wanted to help them eliminate those dangers so that they would be happy. Uh, the opportunities, I would help uh, them understand the opportunities they had in life that they ought to seize. Uh, in order to be happy and not have to rely on artificial uh, things to make them feel good about themselves or to eliminate the pain. And then I would help them understand the best strengths that they could harness or their own strengths that they could develop in order to overcome and be happy. Now, this sounds maybe a little esoteric, uh, hard to grasp, but uh, when I did this in my business, I would ask myself, so why are people, baby boomers, uh, feeling confused and isolated and, and powerless? And to give them clarity, confidence, and capability, I had to solve their DOS. Financially speaking, what were the biggest dangers? Taxes, inflation, market volatility. So then I would help them solve those dangers, eliminate them with opportunities. Well, let's convert to tax-free. Uh, let's have inflation work for you instead of against you and let's get rid of the market volatility so you don't lose. So by focusing on their DOS, I solved their DOS and uh, I was able to help them seize those opportunities. And then the best strengths were to choose investments that had liquidity, safety, and predictable rates of return and I prefer tax-free. By focusing on that, my business went through the roof because it wasn't about me, it was about them and solving their DOS. When I had over 3,000 financial advisors, CPAs and tax attorneys come through and pay 6,000 bucks in tuition for a three-day training, I was simply solving their DOS. What are these financial advisors uh, experiencing? Why are they feeling confused, isolated, and powerless? What are the big dangers they're facing? They, they don't have enough people to talk to. They don't know how to market. They don't know how to explain complex things. So I help them do that. 
I help them seize the opportunities and then harness the best strengths. And so I was solving the financial advisor's DOS. I wrote books that they could give to their clients that would help them educate. And then I helped them solve their DOS while they were helping their customers and clients solve their DOS. What's DOS? Figuring out what are the biggest dangers that those you care about are facing. Eliminate those dangers with opportunities and then harness the best strengths to empower them that they can do this. And so I want to use DOS to help you eliminate the dangers, seize the greatest opportunities and harness the best strengths to create a blue ocean environment where there is no competition. And when you have that abundance breeds abundance, instead of dwelling in this red ocean of competition and tearing other people down, you don't get ahead when you do that. So I would encourage you, if you'd like to learn this, you could uh, purchase the book, Blue Ocean Strategy, but even more than that, uh, in many of the various educational resources that you can search by clicking below, a lot of the ways that I've helped people create Blue Ocean strategies for their business or their families are explained in these educational materials. And I hope you'll find some additional clarity on how you can create your own Blue Ocean. Thank you.